And I believe that what you say is true, and I do have lectures on this, and I have also presentations on this. Um, to prove that Muslims were in America before Columbus is much easier than to prove that Columbus was in America. <laughs> much easier. And uh, there's also a book, if you want to read about this, called How America Discovered Columbus. It's very good because, you know, Columbus did come over the ocean, but we discovered him and made him into a myth. Because he was actually a criminal. And I studied Columbus a little bit, and in the University of Chicago Library, I got a book which is the litigation against Columbus. Uh, the Spanish litigation. It's this thick, this big. This man was always in court. You know, he wasn't a good man at all. Um, and he's very self-promoting. But we know that, uh, we know this from Arab history, that in about 1315, the kingdom of Mali, under the Mansas, Mansa Khan Khan Abu Bakr, Mansa Khan Khan Musa, who were brothers, they put together a fleet of 2,400 boats, filled them with warriors, and dried meat, and water, and gold, and salt. And they left the Gambia River and go straight into the equatorial current, which goes to America. So even if you're not paddling or you don't have a sail, you'll get there in about 50 days. Okay, well they, they are warriors, so they paddle and they use sails. And in fact, they can come back, but they don't come back through the equatorial current. They'd have to go to the north or the south. So Mansa Khan Khan Musa, he told, tells us basically, I, I could show you this in the manuscript, that he believed you could cross the ocean. Okay, so this raises another question because if you look at the oldest people who have been discovered in America, and I don't know if I'm going to have a presentation like that in these days, you know, but I have roots, if, uh, uh, I don't, I'm sorry, but you know, I love this. And if you look at the oldest skeletons of human beings in the Americas, which goes back roughly to about maybe 13,000 BC, I'm a little bit vague on the memory, where do you think you find them? Well, you know they all came over from the Arctic, right? They came by the Bering Strait, and no doubt some did. Okay, but where do you find them? The first, Brazil, Brazil, way down in the south, and southern Mexico. That's a long way from Alaska. That's a long way. And when you take their skeletons and you put their faces back together by forensic technique, they are Africans. They are Africans. How did they get here? Equatorial current. Did they want to come, or did they come by mistake? Well, we don't know, do we? But they came here. What is the oldest known civilization in America? Anybody know? The sisters? Olmec. And you go look at the Olmec heads. There's about 19 of them. They're made of balsite. They weigh about 30 tons each. And you tell me who they are. Africans. And I would say Mandinka warriors. In any case, they wear Mandinka helmets. Okay, and of course they can't be Africans. How could Africans be in America? And these are kings. And everyone has a distinctive face. Look at them. Some are laughing, some are smiling. These are warriors and kings. What were they doing in America? Well, again, they got into the equatorial current. Did they intend to do that or not? What I believe is they intended to do that. Why? Gold. You know, and this is one of the things, you know, that we're, we're told, is that historians, if you look at the gold that was in the kingdom of Mali, no one on earth had gold like that. And some historians say they couldn't have gotten this from West Africa. <coughs> you know, and I could tell you that in detail, because the people who had the gold mines, they hid them, even from the king of Mali. And they weren't Muslims, they were pagans, if you will. But they will hide the gold mines because they don't want anybody using those gold mines. But now we pretty much know where the gold is. 
And like this couldn't provide the kind of gold that we're told about that Molly had. They were always bringing it from over the water. That's what I believe. Even Mansa Kankan Abu Bakr, he goes with the ships. Why? Gold. Now Mansa Kankan Musa comes to Egypt in 1325. He's very generous. He causes inflation for 15 years. And he tells us they, we didn't see them after that. Okay, well, you know, they maybe didn't come back yet. But did they come back when he came home? We don't know. We don't know. They, they may have come back. I wouldn't be surprised. But, uh, so this is extremely important. And as our sister pointed out, we know from sound terracotta evidence that they were here. And you have, I could show you, I'd love to show you, you know, up there where you could see it. But we have, for example, many African faces in the Terracotta River uh, record of Mexico and elsewhere, as our sister said. You have one who is a very black Mandinka, very black, and he's got compound earrings, and he's, he's got a special dress. And I showed some of the Mandinkas of West Africa this time. They said, Donso, Donso. He's a hunter, because they know what a hunter is. And the hunter, you know, some of you might be hunters, but their hunters know where the snakes are. They know where the lion is. And they know how to go. So if you're coming into the jungles of America, you've got to have it done so, because they know the snakes, even though that snake is new to them. But they will say, go this way, don't go that way. Go by the water, don't go by the land. Go by the land, don't go by the water. And so he's going to be big, and he is. And again, we have an uh, Austrian archaeologist, Alexander von or von Wutenau. Wutenau. Okay? He's written about this. And uh, Ivan Sertema, von Sertema, who wrote that came before Columbus, the book that our sister referred to, he also refers to Wutenau. Wutenau is a first-rate archaeologist. And in fact, he found these terracottas in the basement of the National Museum of Mexico. Well, what's that all about? Because we don't want to be descended from black people, right? That's what that's about. They hit it up. These are noble black people. These are better people than you. And Boutinau would show this black statue, you know, to his students, graduate students, <coughs> And they would say, it looks like an African, but it cannot be. There were no Africans in America before Columbus. Okay, so is that stupid? No, but that's cognitive frames. See, if you don't have the cognitive frame that enables you to imagine authentically that Muslims could cross the ocean, then you can't imagine it. And we know in New Mexico, that the, um, and maybe Arizona, the Apaches, the Spanish believed the Apaches were doing jihad. You can read it in their books. It's well known. And they believed that the Apaches had mosques in their camps and were praying. And of course that's absurd, isn't it? And that's what historians will say. They'll say this is absurd. No, it's not absurd. It's just you don't know anything about us. And you don't know that we can cross the Atlantic better than you can, and also that if we came here, we would have blended in with the First Nations by the cultural imperative. We would not have destroyed their cultures, and we would have lived among the Apaches as Apaches. But maybe some of the things they do, we wouldn't do. Maybe some of the things the Iroquois do, we wouldn't do. And again, we have a brother called Farouk Abdul Haq, um, Robert Crane. He was an advisor of, Kissin uh, of Nixon before Kissinger. He's a good man. He's a Republican. He's a Cherokee, he's a quarter Cherokee. And when he became Muslim, he told his grandmother, I'm a Muslim, she's from the Wolf Clan, which is the shamans. They're the ones who tell you all kinds of, they, they carry the knowledge of the religion. She said, we always had Muslims, you know, in the Wolf Clan, but we didn't tell the white man. We had a sister go there to the Cherokees. Some of you would know her if I mentioned her name, but I won't do that, not polite. She's a Palestinian. She went down to North Carolina and met the Cherokees, a lot of other white girls with her. And they said, where are you from? She's wearing a scarf. She said, it's a long story. They said, where are you from? 
It's a long story. They said, please, where are you from? She said, Palestine. So you said, they said, so you think Cherokees don't know about Palestine? And then they took her and they loved her, by the way. And they said, you're not like the others. You're not like the others, and I could tell you why. Because one of the chiefs, for example, was talking to you like I am, and he began to choke. And the, and the white girls got by, and they go, oh, oh, oh. And what did she do? She got up and got a glass of water and gave me a glass of water. You know, and so he said, you're not like the others. You're different. And, he, and they took her into this room. She told me herself. And they said, tell us if you recognize anything. She walked in, she said, there's the hand of Fatima. And they said, we have much more in common than you can imagine. And you look at Sequoia, the great Cherokee chieftain, and see what he's wearing on his head. Always a turban, isn't it? And his clothes look almost like Kurdish Muslim clothes. And when the Spanish came here, when Cortez goes into Mexico City around 1537, he conquers Tenochtitlan. What does he say? He said, we found muchas mezquitas mm. y teocalis y casas grandes. We found many mosques and indigenous temples. Teocalis is an indigenous temple. And big houses. Well, you know that's not true, is it? He had something wrong with his brain. And I also had the honor to meet the Duchess of Medina Sidonia in Spain. Her family is a royal family, and they have the, they are in charge of the archives of the Spanish Armada, which means that they've got all the records of Seville in the 1300s, 1400s, 1500s, um, because you know after they conquered Seville, then the Armada will be based in Seville. So she can't go back before that. But she has written a book in Spanish called Africa versus America, la fuerza del paradigma. Africa against America, the force of the paradigm. And she shows, using her documents, that Muslims were bringing goods into Seville in the 1300s, but maybe not Muslims, but Spanish. They were coming from America. So she says the Andalusians were in America too. And they were there at least 200 years before Columbus. I believe that. And the conquistadores, everywhere they go, they report finding Muslims. Sometimes they find Muslims that look like Andalusians. So they were Africans without any question. And Africans are probably the first people to come to this continent. And there are a lot of things, so we've got to study. We've got to study, brothers and sisters.